Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm going to um, talk about um, orthobiologics use for musculoskeletal conditions. So the company was um, incorporated in 2015. Um, we were in, we um, became a uh, traded company in 2017. Uh, we're a spin-off of Polytechnique Montreal. It's the University of Montreal Affiliated Engineering School. Uh, technology is a mucoadhesive catosan based uh, polymer um, that um, is uh, specifically designed to deliver orthobiologics. And by orthobiologics, I mean plasma, uh, platelet-rich plasma or uh, bone marrow aspirate concentrate. Uh, to treat various orthopedic conditions, uh, soft tissue conditions such as um, meniscal tears, ligament tears, tendon tears, and also cartilage repair. Um, Ortho-R is the first product in development and that addresses uh, all those um, conditions that I just mentioned. Um, nice feature about the product, it is an adjuvant to standard of care surgery. So it's used in the, into the OR right after the surgery, and we'll see a bit later uh, how it works. Um, with regards to the uh, capital uh, of the company, uh, we are trading on uh, onto the Canadian Stock Exchange under ORTH. Uh, we raised a mix of uh, seed and um, uh, security, um, convertible securities, about 6.5 million, uh, 6.7 million altogether. 55% uh, of ownership is uh, founders, uh, management, and uh, friends of the company, uh, also the university. Um, and we're seeking to raise a minimum of 5 million uh, US. The market need for soft tissue repair market is a $5 billion market right now. Um, for example, for rotator cuff tears, uh, there are 600,000 uh, surgeries per year in the US alone. Um, about 4 million uh, patients have uh, uh, rotator cuff tears, uh, they live with it. Um, and um, you know, the, the opportunity for us is that standard of care surgery has 50% failures of, of their patients. So they, it's a huge um, market need. Uh, orthopods are desperate to improve the outcomes, of course, of their surgeries. And uh, so they're seeking for new um, options, new tools to improve those results. And one of them is the use of orthobiologics. And, um, and we'll talk about it uh, in a second. Um, and same thing for meniscus uh, tears, about uh, you know, 20 to 40% of meniscus tear standard of care repair have failure and cartilage lesions out of you know, 1.2 million diagnosed cartilage lesions per year, only 120,000 are, um, are addressed or, or repaired, um, but there is a significant need for, to improve um, the, um, the options there too because uh, they have very limited tools right now. The use, um, those orthopedic surgeons have started about four years ago, three years, four years ago, uh, most, um, um, most of them are starting to use um, PRP, platelet-rich plasma, orthobiologics, uh, again, to try to improve uh, their outcomes. Uh, the big issue there is that a PRP uh, residence time is only, it's less than 24 hours. Um, so PRP is very rich in growth factors, thousands of proteins, uh, interleukin, so cell signaling uh, factors. And um, so if it does not stay uh, into your repair site long enough, it's uh, difficult to start to induce a um, guidance of uh, new tissue regeneration. So we are addressing that with our technology. So our biologic implant um, is a mix of chitosan and PRP. So it's a combination product. The product is a, a lyophilized powder so it has a shelf life of two years or more. Um, we um, solubilize the powder with PRP or bone marrow aspirate, so directly with the autologous uh, PRP that we harvest from the patient. So it's very practical because it's easy to use into the OR. 
Um, and the, the patent, uh, one of the patents that we have is, of course, the um, solubilization of the um, chitosan with the orthobiologic. Um, chitosan is positively, positively charged, so again, it makes a wonder delivery system for orthobiologic because positively charged matrix sticks well to negatively, negatively charged uh, human soft tissues. Um, the matrix, um, uh, the mixed uh, and, and the matrix uh, coagulates rapidly, remains stable, and also impedes the clot retraction. So if you put PRP alone into a glass tube uh, within an hour, it will reduce its volume by 80%. So imagine if you cover a lesion, uh, you can imagine that 80%, an hour after, you know, 80% of that lesion will not be covered by your uh, you know, growth factors and other elements to uh, improve healing. So our gel, um, our matrix, or our polymer uh, address that by having a full uh, covering uh, lesion and that would release those growth factors and elements over time and improving residence time for, from less than 24 hours for PRP alone up to six weeks. We have tons of preclinical in vitro, uh, in vitro and preclinical studies that have been published and presented, and are, uh, most of them are accessible on our website. We extract the chitosan from shrimp shells. So shrimp sh the chitosan uh, or the chitin um, in shrimp shells um, gives the rigid rigidity of the exoskeleton of uh, crustaceans. And, um, and it has you know, various properties. There are some products onto the US market. Um, one of them is uh, hem, from Hemcon. It is an hemostat, so it stops bleeding very quickly. And um, so it's used by the US Army for wounded soldiers. Um, so chitosan is, has been used in the food industry and it's a glycosamylic and a sugar, so it's well uh, metabolized um, and degraded by uh, the human body. And, um, and we have patented the range of deacetylation, so your percentage of deacetylation of the molecule uh, and also the average molecular weight make, uh, makes the physical chemical properties very specific to whatever application you want to have. So the product comes uh, again in a vial and as a powder. Then, um, for example, you have a rotator cuff tear. They roll you into the OR, in, into your bed. And then a uh, nurse, of course, would harvest your, some blood, 60 cc of your own uh, autologous blood, will spin the blood for between eight and 12 minutes, depending on the um, device uh, to, to separate uh, blood components. And we will har harvest only the PRP uh, fraction uh, from that, and then just uh, inject it into the vial, shake for 10 seconds, and then it's ready to use in the OR. So in the rotator cuff, for example, standard of care surgery is anchorage of the tendon to the bone uh, plus sutures. And uh, in our technology, again, once the surgery is, is finished, um, the product is ready to be used and to be applied um, and delivered on top of the lesion and in, you know, at the junction of the bone and the tendon. So it's extremely um, viable as a uh, product and technology and, and uh, a biologic, of course. And so it will stick there in place and, um, and then guide and accelerate uh, wound healing. In sheep studies, preclinical studies, um, on the left picture, you can see the organization, the cellular organization um, of the normal uh, tendon tissue. So the cells are elongated and, and bundled. Uh, the mid one, the mid picture is the reflection of a scarish tissue generated by um, just standard of care surgery without any, uh, any biologics. And on the rightmost picture, you can see tissue that is regenerated with standard of care surgery plus the combination of the polymer and the um, growth factors from the PRP. The histology for, from the same uh, sheep, uh, again, the, the leftmost uh, pictures are the reflect of normal tissue with lots of red in it. The red is the staining for glycosamylglycan, and glycosamylglycans are essential uh, micromolecules for 
the physiology and the junk at the junction of the um, uh, antithesis, you know, the, the, the interrelation between the bone and the tendon. The middle pictures are scarish tissue, no red. So again, a tissue that would not be mechanically or biologically viable. And the rightmost pictures is the uh, red and uh, viable tissue that we can regrow with the technology. We are starting a US clinical trial this year. So we're preparing um, this um, together with our uh, CRO uh, MECRA. And um, so we are um, going to enroll about 75 patients in three groups. Uh, the protocol may vary uh, depending on uh, regulatory um, uh, final uh, decisions. And, uh, but we will measure, um, uh, of course, safety, but uh, many uh, clinical endpoints, uh, pain, uh, function scales specific to the shoulder. Uh, MRI, we will measure the tendon gap reduction, and also we will um, measure the number of retears uh, because this is where we want to decrease that 50% or more number down to as much as possible to uh, you know, increase that, those outcomes uh, for those patients and, and surgeons. Um, we will have six to 10 centers in the US. And um, yes, and that uh, first phase, of course, will give us the power that we need for a second phase. Um, Milestone-wise, I'm not sure if you can read much. Oh, yeah, not too bad. But uh, lots of, uh, it's busy a bit, but just wanted to highlight uh, what we have accomplished in the last year with uh, restricted uh, you know, resources. And uh, so we've been, you know, happily uh, very uh, good at delivering what we wanted. And the red circle is the reflect of the transition from a preclinical uh, company into a clinical company that is happening as we speak. And um, so again, we are doing the regulatory um, work uh, with our uh, CRO right now and preparing the clinical trial. Um, we are expecting to start enrolling this year. Again, um, six to 12 months uh, of uh, enrollment and then 12 months follow up. So, you know, in a couple of years, uh, we will have results from that first phase. And, uh, and then we'll start uh, the second phase uh, at that time. So product uh, or regulatory approval shall come uh, somewhere in 2023 or 20, yeah, 23, 24 maximum. Yeah. We did uh, proof of concepts also for meniscus. Uh, meniscus is very difficult to heal, especially if your tear is in the white, white zone. So meniscus is divided in three zones, red, 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 white, and white, white. Uh, as much red you have is because it's vascularized. If it's not vascularized, like tendons, like uh, uh, ligaments, it's because there is no blood flow or very little uh, blood flow access. And um, so we, here we have uh, the treatment, uh, you know, the standard of care, which is suture. And the group was added PRP alone versus standard of care plus um, our combination product. And as you can see on the right, there is still a tear present, you know, at three months. And on the left side, we would, um, you know, reach the complete uh, closure of the of the tear, and we did also proof of concept again into uh, for the cartilage indication. Uh, on the right side, the standard of care for cartilage repair is microfracture, and so we added PRP alone with microfracture, which is used presently by the orthopedic surgeons. And as you can see on the left side, the combination product plus uh, microfracture, of course, regenerate more um, hyaline-like uh, cartilage. Uh, the red uh, in the below um, pictures is, of course, again, the reflect of glycosam lauriacin, which is highly concentrated in cartilage. And again, much better structure uh, tissue that is generated with the combination product. We work with the best of the best um, into the field. So we try to uh, subcontract to, to the ones that have the, the best expertise in our field, uh, be it um, preclinical studies. So we work with, uh, of course, GLP uh, independent labs to generate the data. And, uh, and we have uh, uh, university, of course, uh, that are uh, working with us with uh, regards to sometimes preclinical and, and right now preparing the clinical studies. So MECRA is our uh, CRO for um, you know, the uh, regulatory and also managing the clinical trial. Uh, CABS is our manufacturer. CABS is manufacturing um, the first generation product 
that was uh, that was developed uh, back into the 2000s. I was CEO of that first uh, spin-out, and um, so it's the same uh, manufacturer that produced the new generation products. So risk-wise, uh, risk is of course decreased, um, and then the structure of the company this morning or today uh, at noon, um, you know, we were talking about minimizing expenses. So the structure is very flat. Uh, so again, we subcontract uh, most of it, um, preclinical, clinical, manufacturing. Uh, the university is taking and continuing to be the uh, R&D um, arm of, of our company. We pay a monthly fee. Uh, and uh, so we have a bunch of scientists and four labs there and the leftmost blue um, uh, squares is the um, people that um, we are involved directly with R2R and myself. The board is a, well, the, the board as it is have exited more than $2 billion in, in uh, exits or, or participated in more than $2 billion in exits. So uh, Steve Saviak, the founder, is a pharma person, so he has a, a Canadian a pharma distribution company in Montreal. Um, Mr. Um, uh, Brent Norton is the CEO that I just replaced uh, last June. And, uh, and again, he has lots of experience, of course, in um, raising uh, capital and, and into managing companies. Um, yeah, um, Pierre Lorrain is uh, also the, um, the, the, the um, founder of a Prometic company that is uh, valued at more than a billion dollar. Mike and Carolina are the original um, uh, brains behind uh, the science at uh, Polytechnic Montreal. Now they are at George Mason uh, in Washington. And then Luke and Tom are uh, two uh, very uh, active and uh, successful uh, people into our field. Uh, we have a clinical advisory board with, uh, you know, Dr. Farr is a very, very well known KOL into for the knee. Uh, Scott Rodeo at HSS is uh, another, uh, you know, top gun that is uh, rising and, and he's the uh, uh, team principal for the Giants uh, uh, football club uh, in New York and, and also the, uh, the U.S. Olympic team. Um, Dr. Martin Snow is in the UK and then uh, Jacques Twelle in Montreal, but again, uh, sports medicine related people. Uh, financing need uh, for the next three years is roughly $8 million. If we want to do the basic uh, programs, we can raise more and, and accelerate the other programs. But right now, uh, you know, $8 million is uh, what we have planned for the moment. Some of the money is coming from grants and, uh, and other um, tax credit uh, sources, but equity wise, we would like to raise minimum 5 million and use of foresees that uh, money of course will serve mainly to run the clinical trials and then um, you know, some uh, meniscus um, uh, preclinical um, with larger amount of sheep for the, the, the meniscus uh, program. Um, exits in our field since uh, 2016, you know, there are various ones, you know, 1.7 billion and uh, the lowest is 107 million. The zeros are unknown uh, numbers, but uh, lots of activi activity in our field, of course. And we feel that we have a high volume, low cost product that, you know, if we demonstrate that we reduce significantly the number of, of failures, uh, that it could be used, you know, prophylactically. Uh, you know, to every patient um, because it's simple to prepare, cheap, and um, and uh, you know would have would be impactful, of course, into the orthopedic practice. So just to wrap up again, significant market need, um, novel technology. Um, you know there are other matrix that exist. I was part of many of them. I launched hyaluronic acid back in 1990s. First sales came from uh, my group in Canada. Uh, and today it's a two billion dollar market, and we sold biometrics to Genzyme. I was part of uh, of that, you know, for 12 years, and um, and then uh, I did also other plays in other metrics. First generation of the technology that I I talk about today, and again, Smith and Nephew is marketing the product in 40 countries for cartilage repair. I also worked in uh, wound care uh, with um, uh, cellulose uh, matrix. And now back, of course, with uh, Kytosan Matrix in this uh, new play, and I'm very happy to be part of it. 
think that's about that. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.